And just like that, out of the blue, Google drops its latest AI tool, Lumiere. Lumiere is at its core a text-to-video AI model. You type in text and the AI neural nets translate that into video. But as you'll see, Lumiere is a lot more than just text to video. It allows you to animate existing images, creating video in the style of that image or painting, as well as things like video in painting and creating specific animation sections within images. So let's look at what it can do, the science behind it. Google published a paper talking about what they improved. And I'll also show you why the artificial AI brains that generate these videos are much more weird than you can imagine. So this is Lumiere from Google Research, a space-time diffusion model for realistic video generation. We'll cover space-time diffusion model a bit later, but right now, this is what they're unveiling. So first of all, there's text to video. This is the video that are produced by various prompts like US flag waving on massive sunrise clouds, funny cute pug dog feeling good listening to music with big headphones and swinging head, etc. Snowboarding Jack Russell Terrier. So I gotta say, these are looking pretty good. If these are good representations of the sort of style that we can get from this model, this would be very interesting. So for example, Take a look at this one, astronaut on the planet Mars, making a detour around his base. This is looking very consistent. This looks like a tablet. This looks like a medicine tablet of some sort floating in space. But I gotta say, everything is looking very consistent, which is what they're promising in their research. It looks like they found a way to create a more consistent shot across different frames. Temporal consistency, as they call it. Here's image to video. So as you can see that this is nightmarish, but that's that's the scary looking one. But other than that, everything else is looking really good. So they're taking images and turning them into animations, little animations of a bear walking in New York, for example, Bigfoot walking through the woods. So these were started with an image that then gets animated. These are looking pretty good. Here are the pillars of creation animated right there. That's uh, pretty neat, kind of a 3D structure they're showing. Stylized generation, so using a target image to kind of make something colorful or animated. Take a look at this elephant right here. One thing that jumps out at me is it is very consistent. There's no weirdness going on. In a second, we'll take a look at other leading AI models that generate video. And I gotta say, this one is probably the smoothest looking one. Here's another one. So as you can see here, here's the style reference image. So they want this style. And then they say a bear twirling with delight, for example, right? So then it creates a bear twirling with delight or a dolphin leaping out of the water in the style of this image. Here's the same or similar prompts with this as the style reference. Now this is the style reference. I gotta say it captures the style pretty well. Here's kind of that neon phosphorus glowing thing. And they introduce a space-time unit architecture. And we'll look at that towards the end of the video, but basically it sounds like it creates sort of the idea of the entire video at once. So while other models, it seems like kind of go frame by frame, this one has sort of an idea of what the whole thing is going to look like at the very beginning. And there's a video stylization. So here's a lady running. This is the source video and the various craziness that you can make her into. The same thing with a dog and a car and a bear. Cinemagraphs is the ability to animate only certain portions of the image, like the smoke coming out of this train. This is something that Runway ML, I believe, recently released and it looks like Google is hot on their heels, creating basically the same ability. Then we have video and painting. So if a portion of an image is missing, you're able to use AI to sort of guess at what that would look like. I gotta say, so here where the hand comes in, that is very interesting because that seems kind of advanced because notice in the beginning, he throws the green leaf in the missing portion of the image. And then you see him coming back to the image that we can see throwing a green leaf or two. So it makes the assumption that, hey, the things there will also be green leaves. Interestingly enough though, I do feel like I can spot a mistake here. The leaves that are already on there are fresh looking as opposed to the cooked ones like they are on this side. So it knows to put in the green leaves as the guy is throwing them for them to be fresh because it matches the fresh leaves here, but it misses the point that, hey, these are cooked leaves and these are fresh, but still it's very impressive that it's able to sort of, to sort of guess at what's happening in that moment. And this is where if you've been following some of the latest AI research, this is where these neural nets get a little bit weird. Well, again, come back to that at the end, but how they are able to predict certain things, like what happens here, for example, like no one codes it to know that this is probably a cake of some sort. Nobody tells it what this thing is. It guesses from 
clues that it sees on screen. But how does that is really, really weird. Let's just say that. And this is pretty impressive. So here we're able to change the clothes that the person is wearing throughout these shots while you know, notice the hat and the face, they kind of remain consistent across all the shots, whereas the dress is changed based on a text prompt. As you watch this, think about where video production for movies and serial TV shows, etc., where that's going to be in five to 10 years. Will something like this allow everyday people sitting at home to create stunning Hollywood style movies with whatever characters they want, whatever settings they want, with generated video and AI voices. You can create a movie starring Hugh Hefner as a chicken, for example. So really fast, this is another study called Beyond Surface Statistics out of Harvard. So this has nothing to do with the Google project that we're looking at, but this paper tries to answer the question of how do these models, how do they create images? How do they create videos? As you can see here, it says these models are capable of synthesizing high quality images, but it remains a mystery how these networks transform, let's say the phrase car in the street into a picture of a car in the street. So in other words, when we type in this, when a human person says, draw a picture of a car in the street or a video of a car in the street, how does that thing do it? How does it translate that into a picture? Do they simply memorize superficial correlations between pixel values and words, or are they learning something deeper? such as the underlying model of objects, such as cars, roads, and how they are typically positioned. And there's a bit of an argument going on in the scientific community about this. So some AI scientists say all it is is just sort of surface level statistics. They're just memorizing where these little pixels go and they're able to kind of reproduce certain images, etc. And some people say, well, no, there's something deeper going on here, something new and surprising that these AI models are doing. So what they did is they created a model that was fed nothing but 2D images. So images of cars and people and ships, etc. But that model, it wasn't taught anything about depth like depth of field, like where the foreground of an image is or where the background of an image is. It wasn't taught about what the focus of the image is, what a car is, etc. And what they found is, so here's kind of like the decoded image. So this is kind of how it makes it from step one to finally step 15, where as you can see, you can see this is a car. So a human being would be able to point at this and say, that's a car. What in the image is closest to you, the person taking the image, you say, well, probably this wheel is the closest, right? This is the, the kind of the foreground. This is the main object. And that's kind of the background. That's far, far away. And this is close, right? But the reason that you are able to look at this image and know that is because you've seen these objects in the real world, in the 3D world. You can probably imagine how this image would look if you're standing off the side here, looking at it from this direction. This AI model that made this has no idea about any of that. All it's seeing is a bunch of these 2D images, just pixels arranged on a screen. And yet, when we dive in to try to understand how it's building these images from scratch, this is what we start to notice. So early on, when it's building this image, this is kind of what the, the depth of the image looks like. So very early on, it knows that sort of this thing is in the foreground. It's closer to us. And this right here, the blue, that's the background. It's far from us. Now, looking at this image, you can't possibly tell what this is going to be. You can't tell what this is going to be till much, much later. Maybe here we can kind of begin to start seeing some of the lines that are in here, but that's about it. You can see like the wheels and maybe you could guess at what that is. But here in the beginning, you have no idea. And yet the model knows that something right here is in the foreground, something's in the background. And towards the end, it knows that this is closer, this is close, and this is far. This is salient object, meaning like what is the focus? What is the main object? So it knows that the main object is here. It doesn't know what a car is. It doesn't know what an object is. It just knows like this is the, the focus of the image. Again, only towards much later do we realize that yes, in fact, this is the car. And so this is the conclusion of the paper. Our experiments provide evidence that stable diffusion model, so this is an image generating model, AI, although solely trained on two-dimensional images, contain an internal linear representation related to scene geometry. So in other words, after seeing thousands or millions of 2D images inside its neural network inside of its brain, it seems like, and again, this is a lot of people sort of dispute this, but some of these research makes it seem like it's developing its neural net that allows it to create a 3D representation of that image, even though it's never been taught what 3D means. It uncovers a salient object, so sort of that main center object that it needs to focus on versus the background of the image, as well as information related to relative depth. And these representations emerge early. So before it starts painting the colors or the little shapes or the, the wheels and the shadows, it first starts thinking about 
the 3D space on which it's going to start painting that image. And here they say, these results add a nuance to the ongoing debates, and there are a lot of ongoing debates about this, about whether generative models, so these AI models, can learn more than just surface statistics. In other words, is there some sort of understanding that's going on? Maybe not like human understanding, but is it just statistics or is there something deeper that's happening? And this is Runway ML. So this is the other, one of the leading sort of text to image AI models. And you might have seen these images. So as you can see here, this is what they're offering. People have made full movies, maybe not hour long, but maybe 10 minutes, 20 minute movies that are entirely generated by AI. So as you can see here, it's it's similar to what Google is offering. Although I gotta say, after looking at Google's work and then this one, Google's does seem just a little bit more consistent, I would say. There seems to be a little bit less shifting and, and shapes going on. It's just a little bit more consistent across time. And they have a lot of the same thing, like this stylization here from a reference video to this image that's like the style reference. But the interesting thing here is this is in the last few months, looks like December, 2023, Runway and ML introduced something they call general world models. And they're saying, we believe the next major advancement in AI will come from systems that understand the visual world and its dynamics. They're starting a long-term research effort around what they call general world models. So their whole idea is that instead of these video AI models creating little clips here and there with little isolated subjects and movements, that a better approach would be to actually use the neural networks and them building some sort of a world model to understand the images that they're making and to actually utilize that to have it almost create like a little world. So for example, if you're creating a clip with multiple characters talking, then the AI model would actually almost simulate that entire world with the, with the rooms and the people, and then the people would talk to each other and it would just take that clip, but it would basically create much more than just a clip. Like if a bird is flying across the sky, it would be simulating the wind and the physics and all that stuff to try to capture the movement of that bird to create realistic images and video. So they're saying a world model is an AI system that builds an internal representation of an environment and it uses it to simulate future events within that environment. So for example, for Gen 2, which is their model, their video model, to generate realistic short videos, it has developed some understanding of physics and motion. However, it's still very limited, struggling with complex camera controls or object motions, amongst other things. But they believe, and a lot of other researchers as well, that this is sort of the next step for us to get better at creating video, at teaching robots how to behave in the physical world, like for example, the NVIDIA's foundation agent, that we need to create bigger models that simulate entire worlds. And then from those worlds, they pull out what we need, whether that's an image or text or a robot's ability to open doors and pick up objects. All right, but now back to Lumiere, a space-time diffusion model for video generation. So here they have a number of examples for the text to video, of image to video, stylized generation, etc. And so in Lumiere, they're trying to build this text-to-video diffusion model that can create videos that portray realistic, diverse, and coherent motion, a pivotal challenge in video synthesis. And so the new thing that they introduce is the space-time UNET architecture that generates entire temporal duration of the video at once. So in other words, it sort of thinks through how the entire video is going to look like in the beginning, as opposed to existing video models, so other video models which synthesize distant keyframes followed by temporal super solution, basically meaning they do it one at a time. So they start with one and then create the others. And they're saying that makes global temporal consistency difficult, meaning that the object, as, as you watch a video of it, right, it looks a certain way on the first second of the video, but by second five, it's just completely different. And so here, basically, they're comparing these two videos, so Imogen and ours, so the Lumiere model, as you can see here, here, a sample, a few clips, and they're looking at the XT slice. So the XT slice, you can basically think of that as, so for example, in stocks, you have, you know, the price of a stock over time, right? So it kind of goes like this. Here, the X is the spatial dimension. So where certain things are in space on the image versus T, temporal, the time. So the X here is basically where we might be looking at the width of the image, for example, of any image in time. And T, the temporal, is like how consistent is across time. So as you can see, hit this green line. So we're just looking at this thing across the entire image. And this is what that looks like. So as you can see here, this is going pretty well, and then it kind of messes up, and it kind of gets crazy here, and then kind of goes back to doing okay. Whereas in Lumiere, it's pretty 
pretty good. I mean, maybe some funkiness right there in one, one frame, but it's pretty good. Same thing here. I mean, this is, as you can see here, pretty good. Maybe you can say that there's a little bit of funkiness here, but overall it's very good. Whereas in this image and video, I mean, as you can see here, there's kind of like a lot of nonsense that's happening, right? And so here you can see, like, you can't tell how many legs it has, if it's missing a leg, et cetera. Whereas in the Lumiere, I mean, I, can, I feel like the, you know, you can see each of the legs pretty distinctly and their position, and it remains consistent across time, or at least consistently easy to see where they are. But I gotta say, I can't wait to get my hands on it. It looks like as of right now, I don't see a way to access it. This is just sort of a preview, but hopefully they will open it up for testing soon and we'll be able to get our hands on it and check it out. And here, interestingly enough, they actually compare how well theirs performs against the other state-of-the-art models in the, in the industry. So the two that I'm familiar with is Pika and Gen 2. Those are the two that I've used. And they're saying that their video is preferred by users in both text to video and image to video generation. So blue is theirs and the baseline is the orange one. So it seems like there are pretty big differences in every single one. This seems like video quality. I mean, it beats out every single other one of these, which, which I believe this text alignment, which here means probably how well the image, how true it is to the prompt, right? So if you type in a prompt, how accurately it represents it. So it looks like maybe Imogen is the closest one, but it beats out most of the other ones by quite a bit. And then video quality of image to video, it seems like it beats them out as well, with Gen 2 probably being the next best one. And here they provide a side-by-side -side comparison. So for example, the first prompt is a sheep to the right of a wine glass. So this is Pika, which which not great because there's no wine glass. Here's Gen 2, consistently putting it on the left. Anime Diff, which just has two glasses and maybe a reflection of a sheep. Image and video, same thing. So the glass is on the left. Zero scope, no glasses that I can see, although they have sheep. And of course, ours, so the, Lumi, the Google one is, it seems like they nail it in every single one. The, the glass is on the right. Although I got to say Gen 2 is, is great, although it confused the left and the right. But other than that, I mean, same with image and video, actually. Although I feel like Gen 2, the quality is much better of the sheep. Because that's, you know, that's a good looking sheep. I should probably rephrase that. That's a well rendered sheep. How about that? Versus image in, I mean, that's a weird looking thing there. That could almost be a horse or a cow if you just look at the face. And Google is, again, excellent. Here's teddy bear skating in Times Square. This is Google. This is Imogen, again, weirdness happening there. And that's Gen 2, again, pretty good, but I mean, the, the thing is facing away. Although here I just noticed, so they, they took skating to mean ice skates, whereas here it looks like these are roller skates, skateboard, etc. And so it looks like in the study, they just showed you two things. And they said, do you like the left or the right more based on motion and better quality? Well, I gotta say, if you're an aspiring AI cinematographer, then this is really good news. Consistent, coherent images that are able to create near lifelike scenes at this point. I mean, I'm sure there's other people that will complain about stuff, but you got to realize how quickly this stuff is progressing. Just to give you an idea, this is about a year ago or so. This is what AI generated video looked like. So can you tell that has improved just a little bit? That's about a year. I'm not sure exactly when this was done, but I'm going to say a year, year and a half ago. And I mean, this thing gets nightmarish. So when I'm talking about weird blocky shapes, things not being consistent across scenes, like what are we even looking at here? Is this a mouth? Is this a building? And here's kind of uh, something from about four months ago from Pika Labs. So as you can see here, it's much better. It's much more consistent. Right, as you can see here, humans, again, maybe they look a little bit weird, but it's better. It can put you in the moment. If you're telling a story that's not necessarily about everything looking realistic, something like this can be created pretty easily. And since it's new, it's novel, people might be, this might be a whole new movement, a new genre of filmmaking that's new, exciting, and never before seen. And most importantly, it's easy to create with a, you know, at home with a few AI tools and anybody out there with creative abilities, with creative talent to tell the stories that they have in their mind without being limited financially by capital. 
They're going to be able to create AI voices. They're going to be able to create AI footage, maybe even have ChatGPT help them with some of the story writing. And what's more, the sort of next generation of things that we're seeing that people are working on is things like the simulation, where you create the characters and then you sort of let them loose in a world. They get simulated with these they get sort of simulated so the stories kind of play out in the world and then you sort of pick and choose what to focus on, which scenes and which characters you want to bring to the front. So you basically act as the world builder. You build the worlds, the characters, the narratives, and AI assists you in creating the visuals, the voices, etc. And you can be 100% in control of it or you can only control the things that you want and the AI generates the rest. So to me, this, if you're interested in movie making and you like these sort of styles that, by the way, quickly will become much more realistic. I would be really looking at this right now because right now is the time that it's sort of emerging into the world and getting really good. And it's going to get better by next year. It's going to be a lot better. Well, my name is Wes Roth and uh, thank you for watching.